Sean Callahan with Husker Online, and we continue our in-depth look of the Nebraska football team as we're previewing the different position groups uh, with ABM. And today, we're taking an in-depth look at Nebraska's tight end room as it's a deep room. It's got a lot of guys coming back that have played in different roles at Nebraska. Let's welcome into the show, uh, first we got Travis Volklek, uh, kind of leading the way in this room, and Chris Hickman, uh, another veteran, Nate Borkacher, who came out of the scene last year. And I, I joked off air, Chancellor Brewington, you're kind of a, a social media sensation um, <laughs> with, with the, the block. I mean, you guys are laughing over there. I mean, <laughs> but I was telling him in the press box, when this guy put dudes in the dirt, like, I mean, everybody would be like, whoa. I mean, do you guys have some fun uh, watching those replays um, with, with some of those blocks Chancellor Brewington made for you guys last year? Yeah, we, we watch uh, replays over and over. Um, coach Beck, you know, he's a great coach. Uh, just up there replaying it back and forth. Looks at, looks at uh, all of us asking us why we can't do that sometimes. So, um, you know, Brew's a great player, and uh, we're pretty lucky to have him on our team. You were a wide receiver, right, at one time before? Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and you, you just kind of grown into a tight end? Yeah, with the help. I mean, really with the guys, but also Coach Beck. Um, he's a very detailed coach, so he's definitely got, my, got me on my P's and Q's. Well, Travis, you're, you're the leader of this room. You're a six-year <clears throat> senior. Um, you got your dad here coaching you in your final year at Nebraska. Um, when you look at this year for you, I mean, you could have gone pro and, and gone that route. You wanted to come back and kind of finish things up. Uh, Why would you come back, and how fun is this year going to be for you uh, getting the chance to be with your dad for your final football season at Nebraska. Yeah, um, you know, it's always been a dream of mine to, um, you know, play for my dad or have him on staff or as an analyst and stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. It's been a lot of fun so far. Um, and, you know, it's been weird seeing him all over the stadium and stuff. But, you know, we, we've had a great time with that. And then, um, yeah, like you said, came back from my sixth year. Um, wanted to be around these guys for one more year. You know, great group of guys. Um, not only in the tight end room, but the whole offense and the whole team. Um, just a bunch of great guys who, uh, you know, just want to go out and uh, win football games. And, you know, going through different um, – you know, there are different options um, when the season ended and a couple of injuries that happened. Um, decided it was better for me to come back, um, give it another another year and, you know, hopefully give me uh, give me another chance next year uh, to go pro. Do you call him dad? Do you call him coach? Uh, dad, all the time. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll mess around. The other uh, the other day we were messing around and I'll call him coach and kind of in a sarcastic way. But um, it's all it's all fun and I'm really happy he's here. Chris, obviously you had um, some moments last year. You had a big big play at Buffalo and some other games early on. You battled some injuries on and off. Uh, but th this is obviously a, a big opportunity for you. Um, how excited are you to, to move into the role you're moving into? Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to be able to do that. Uh, last year I kind of got hurt and didn't get to do as much as I would like. Kind of helped me back. But this year I'm hoping that I get to get on the field a little more and just play with these guys. What about you, Nate? I mean, you were kind of right man, right time, right place, and, and you've taken advantage of that. And, you know, you got on the field at Oklahoma and in some of these early games and, and made some plays, um, and, and you've taken advantage of those opportunities. How, how has that gotten you ready for where you're at today? Um, yeah, I was – I feel like last year I was more of like a depth guy, just kind of adding depth, you know, going if we needed me. But um, I think this spring I, I developed, um, obviously, with these guys getting hurt. Um, it was a great opportunity opportunity for me to uh, just develop my skills and and you know learn a little bit of like leadership roles and and different things like that. And Chancellor, your story is unique uh, because you transferred um, from an FCS school, is Arizona, Northern Arizona, Northern Arizona. Um, how did you even get to Nebraska? Like, how <laughs> did all of a sudden like I'm gonna walk on at Nebraska from an FCS school? I mean, how did that even go down a year ago? Uh, well, my uncle Toby Wright played here, and that's obviously uh, Javen Wrights dad so the connection there um a lot of az guys on the team and um yeah it just kind of happened naturally and not only did you come in as a walk-on transfer but you got on the field last year i mean how, how were you able to kind of break through in a new locker room that had a lot of nfl top talent at the tight end position um it's just come in and just work every day um treat it like you know you're a professional and um the pieces fall where they're supposed to Travis, when you look at this offense now um, with Mark Whipple running the show, 
what is the biggest difference for the tight ends? Uh, we, you know, you look at his film at Pitt, it looks like it, it's a very tight end friendly system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, there's there's differences from the offense last year. There's similarities too. Um, obviously, Oz had a great year last year in the offense that we were running. Um, there'll be just as many, if more, not uh, opportunities for us to go out and make plays with, you know, one tight end on the field, two, uh, maybe even three, I don't know. Um, but there'll be uh, plenty of opportunities for us to go out there and make plays. Yeah, could Teddy Prohaska put on that tight end jersey again <laughs> too, or <laughs> that was a one game know. deal? No, nah, uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, Teddy's a great player, so. What do you like about the offense, Chris, is kind of where it's heading with the tight ends? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just think that uh, it's given us more of an opportunity to be involved with the offense. I mean, we're getting to work a lot more with our O-line, our receivers, our quarterbacks. So, like, we're actually becoming more of a unit. So we're getting, like, a more involved role, like, in the offense. Nate, can you guys flex out a lot, too? Or, I mean, how how, different, how are they using you in different ways to maybe find matchups? Yeah, we uh, flex out a lot, and we can run a lot of routes. But then we can also line up on the line of scrimmage and, and uh, move some guys. And I think that is good for our group, our personnel as well, because I think we have a very versatile group. And I think all of us can can move some guys on the line of scrimmage, but then can go make a play um, in the open field. And Chancellor, for you, how do you kind of take that next step and kind of become more of an every down guy where you can get on there and find different roles? Uh, we know your, your best role right now is putting dudes in the dirt in the goal line, um, but obviously I'm sure you want to do more than that in Nebraska. Yeah, I'd just say, um, first of all, that goes with um, putting on weight. Um, and then next, just learning everything, because during season last year it was kind of a roller coaster, learning new plays. There'd be new plays every day. Um, but yeah, that just goes with knowing the system, being comfortable, and playing confident. You got a lot of newcomers on this team 15 transfers, three JUCOs, 33 new incoming scholarship players. I haven't counted walk ons. Mm -hmm. That's the most ever at Nebraska. Travis, you're an older guy on this team, probably going to be a captain or one of the leaders for sure of this program. How do you rein all this in? Because it's a lot of new personalities, and there's some big personalities that have come into this program. How do you kind of rein that in and, and make sure things stay right at Nebraska? Yeah, you know, when uh, the new guys step foot on campus, we welcome them with open arms in the locker room. Try to get to know the guys, um, you know, hang out with them outside of football, hang out with, hang out with them outside the facility, uh, get to know them as people. Um, and I think, you know, developing relationships with the new guys on the team, um, you know, is huge. You know, getting the trust between one another um, and then just having guys, you know, just be around each other. Um, we're around each other every day in the weight room, on the practice field, doing stuff like that. So uh, it's, it's a little different, um, you know, from the start with all the new faces and stuff. You got to learn guys' names and stuff like that. But, um, you know, once, once I get here, we'll, we'll get to know them and, um, you know, things will be going well. Chris, what do you think of that? Uh, yeah, I also think the best uh, thing for everyone to do is just get around them as much as you can. It makes it a lot easier for their transition as well as ours. Mm -hmm. As long as you're just around them, you know who they are as a person and a player, that helps them come in a lot smoother. How wild is this, though, with college football? I mean, that you can just bring in this many new players now year over year. And, I mean, this is a, kind of the new norm, it feels like. Every year you're going to have 8 to 15 transfer guys coming in. Um, you're, no job is safe. I Man, look at the secondary. They brought in, what, seven or eight new guys in the secondary. And, around Christmas, we didn't know there was going to be seven or eight new guys coming to the secondary. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, just going around, it, it's good to, uh, like, just go up and start up conversations. Like, they're all good guys, and from what we've seen so far, they all look like great football players and will help this team move in the right direction. And Chancellor, you were a transfer a year ago, and mm -hmm. so you kind of know what it's like coming in as the yeah. new guy. Um, but for you, I'm sure, did you, did you say, you know what, I want to prove myself, I want to play at the higher level? Is that kind of what drove you to want to leave the FCS to go to Nebraska? Yeah, 100%. Um, just being confident in your skills and um, wanting to be able to showcase them on a bigger stage. Yep. There's a lot of new coaches on the offensive coaching staff. The one that is not new is your guys' as coach, Sean Becton. And, um, you know, you hear so many compliments about Coach Becton. And, you know, I've got to know him these last four years. And, He's just a stand-up gentleman when you talk to him and just an honest guy, a great leader. For all of you guys, what, what does Sean Becton bring? Why does he get so much out of all of you guys? Yeah, I think, you know, the thing about Beck is he cares about us outside of football. You know, he's always asking 
how things are going outside of practice, um, you know, and then we, we have so much fun with him, you know, we joke around all the time. Um, he's not 100% serious all the time, so we can have some fun. Um, but, you know, when it's time to be serious, he is. He's 100% honest with you, tells you how it is. Um, and, uh, you know, that's probably the biggest thing with me, and he's, he's personable. You can talk with him about anything. So um, that, that's what I really like about him. Yeah, I love how honest he is. Like, whether you're doing good or bad, he's always going to let you know exactly, like, what it is that you're doing right or wrong and I mean yeah he's he creates a like a relationship with all of us like individually it's not just like oh we're his players we're also different like outside of football. Nate it feels like he gives guys a fair shake too because when you come in as a walk-on not every guy gets a fair shake but obviously you know he saw something in you and he's like you're, you're gonna play I don't care scholarship walk-on you're gonna get on the field and play. Yeah I'd agree and and that's why I think that he's a great players coach and he'll get to know you and he doesn't care about all that stuff. And you can't say enough good things about Coach Beck because you could go on forever. And, and that's when it also goes on the field. He's very detailed and, and he really cares about getting the best out of us. Chancellor, were you right in the tight end room right away or did you kind of go back and forth at the very beginning? Were you with Beckton from like day one? Mm -mm, no, I, I, I didn't even know Coach Beck's name um, a week before I was in there. I moved... Uh, probably day six of camp, day seven, when Trav had hurt himself and then Hick hurt himself, and I'm pretty sure it was just, Nate was hurt too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, we could literally talk all day about Beck. He's a God-fearing man. He keeps the main thing the main thing, but he also knows how to uh, transition through life with you and uh, have real life conversations with you. I asked some of the other guys that I've talked to on offense this question. Why is this offense going to be better, in your opinion, if you're trying to sell this to Nebraska fans right now? Yeah, you know, obviously last year um, we had our struggles and stuff. Um, we got a bunch of new guys that came in and are going to have to, you know, help us out. Um, I think we have a bunch of playmakers. Um, you know, we've got great guys at the receiver position, running back position, tight end position, um, quarterback position, O-line. You know, there's been a huge improvement um, since last year. So, uh, you know, we're super excited to get things started here in about a month and a half with camp. And uh, you guys, will, you'll have to wait and see. So we're Why excited. Be better, Chris? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I just think that, we, like, over the years, like, all the stuff that we've been through as a team, I feel like we're getting a lot closer. So I think, like, that is also going to play a big factor in why we're going to do a lot better. Um, I like the uh, mixture between um, the transfers we've gotten and then just like the new coaches and then obviously the guys that are still here from the past. Um, Coach Whip has been around the game for a while and I think he, he really he really knows what he's doing and he does it well. And then we got some playmakers too. Um, I would say it was, it's a mix of everything. Um, Whip has an answer for everything. Um, and especially for the tight ends, we're going to be in so many different roles to where sometimes you not even know like who's the, the actual why or the actual uh, tight end. So, um, and like he said, I think the locker room is the tightest it's ever been, especially on the offensive side. That dynamic with Whipple, Coach Whipple and Coach Frost, I mean, that's different. I mean, because Frost has kind of always been the top, top dog. And now he's got somebody that's right there with him calling the shots on offense and doing things. I mean, how have you seen it change I mean, with, with a guy like Whipple, because it wasn't really that way before with the previous two offensive coordinators. Yeah, um, you know, Coach Whip has a bunch of experience, um, and I think Coach Frost trusts him with what he's doing. Um, so he's just giving him, you know, full charge to go out there and work with the offense and uh, put us in uh, situations to help us win. So Has it made Frost different from what you've seen, just like the way he operates, just having now a true coordinator? Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's pretty much about the same, but I think he's got – like he's been able to bounce his ideas, and they're both able to, yeah. like, make their offenses one. So it's really changed. Kind of blending yeah. two successful the the system of Frost with the system of what Whipple's done. Whipple's done. Have you seen that too, Nate? Yeah, I've seen a lot of blending. I like how we have kept a lot of the same things from last year that worked really well, and then I I see a lot of good things coming from Whip's ideas. Yeah, we definitely have a mix of things we're keeping, things we're you know implementing that's new. Um, but I think it just frees up Frost a little bit more, um, seeing him smile a little bit more. Yeah. And in general, too, I mean, all the new coaches other than, other than Becton, I mean, does it just add a little bit more spice the day to day? I mean, Mickey Joseph, and, I mean, <laughs> Good um, Lord. you know, Apple White, and I mean, Riola. I mean, I know Riola, 
he gets involved, hurt in the practice fights. He's right in there too, mm -hmm. getting with the guy. I mean, he's. I mean, you got. It's just a different vibe. It feels like just with that offensive staff. Yeah, the, all the coaches bring big energy every day. Um, you know, high energy. You know, practices and everything. Um, there's a lot of screaming going on. No, not in a bad way, but good ways. Getting guys hyped up, getting guys excited. And you know, as a player, for me, when I hear that, you know, getting coached like that, it, it gets me excited. So I, I enjoy it. And then, yeah, I mean, just the energy that they bring is. They don't let you lack energy ever, no matter what you're doing, whether you're in film, practice, so lifting. Mickey's going to get on a tight end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're not scared to get on anyone. They they bring energy and reflect that on us. Just have to reiterate the energy. I mean, it's <laughs> it's, it's absurd. Um, you can tell a difference. And I think it I think it's really helping getting the best out of all of us. Yeah, I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you see from that chance in your role? Um, different... Um, different personalities than we had in the past. Um, but I think the guys are responding well, and I think that's really what matters, if the guys respond well to um, the energy and um, you know the hard coaching, I think uh, we'll, be out, we'll be able to play good. One of the things the running backs talked about was behind the scenes. I mean, obviously some of the things are different with you guys, the way the programs run, more player-led things. Um, speak on that, and, and, and what exactly are you doing differently than say a year ago. And I, I get it, a couple of COVID kind of mm -hmm. limited player led things the last few years, but obviously it's different times now. Yeah, um, you know, we're doing our workouts in the morning then we'll go out to the field, all player led stuff, um, going out there through Indy, um, doing walkthroughs with players, um, you know, just, just really trying to get the plays down, uh, trying to get ahead right now. So when camp comes around, you know, we're in the hang of th or in the swing of things and uh, things will be more smooth. But um, something I've noticed, you know, guys, are excited to get out there and do stuff after um, workouts. You know, guys want to be out there, um, and, and uh, you know, it's gone really well so far. You know, as far as the off season goes, guys, um, you know, film watching too is a big part of it. I mean, give us an idea, like how much film, Travis, are you guys watching? What are you watching? Are you watching opponents? Are you watching yourself? Are you watching Pittsburgh cut ups of Mark Whipple? I mean, what, what what all goes into like this the film study this time of year? Yeah, you know, we're watching all different types of film. A little bit of Pitt. Um, you know, we're watching other tight ends as well. Um, you know, guys that got drafted last year watch a lot of a lot of their film to um, try and see what they're doing that you know we can try and put into our game for this next year. Um, you know, and then we'll watch film. You know, from the spring game from last season. Um, just just watching technique technique wise stuff. You know, with the footwork, striking stuff. Um, you know, driving, um, and then route running because Beck's huge on route running and details and stuff like that. Um, so that's something we're you know we're watching uh, quite often. Uh, yeah, I mean, we try to watch as much film as we can. Normally, we haven't yet, but we normally try to get in there as a unit, as a tight end squad, and we like to go in there and watch film together so we can kind of not just watch ourselves and watch other people and critique it, but also hear feedback on how we did from our peers. Was that a big adjustment from you coming from high school, um, kind of studying film at that level? Oh, yeah, and, and especially the dif main difference is how detailed you have to be compared to high school. You're watching film, especially now that spring's over. We kind of went over all the plays, all the details, but now we're going over like all the very fine details and really critiquing. Like, do any high school guys, when they first get here, know how to watch film? I mean, it seems like mm -hmm. when you're in high school and you're on, no. like, you guys come in as the, the stars of your high school, you don't really probably need to watch film. I mean, did you watch, like, at that level? No, I mean, we would go in maybe one day a week and watch film. But I mean, coming in as a freshman, you really don't learn how to watch film until year two, year three. And even now, like Coach Beck will like be, point stuff out and be like, oh wow, I didn't even realize that. And like a false step or an inch or two. I mean, that, at your level of football, that matters. Right? Yeah. I mean, how much does that matter? Yeah, every single detail matters, yeah. If you're a step late or something like that, you know, you miss a guy uh, on a huge block, you know, they tackle a guy for a loss or whatever on third down, it's fourth down now, and um, so it's it's huge. You know, details are huge, and Beck just overemphasizes that on everything we do. Well, let's look ahead now, guys. The schedule's coming up, um, and you open up in Ireland, and you know it's an exciting opportunity, but yet you know a lot on the line. I mean, it's a Big Ten West game. You're playing Northwestern, national television against Fox. How exciting is this for all of you, knowing that in a couple of months you're going to be on a plane to Dublin, Ireland? Yeah, you know, it's super exciting. I know everyone in the locker room is super excited about it. You know, we're looking forward to it. Um, you know, it, it's different. I've never been outside the U.S., so I'm, I'm really, you know, psyched about it. And rumor has it we're staying on a golf course, so I like that as well. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we're, we're super excited. And, you know, 
Uh, Northwestern, they're going to want payback for last year, so and we know that. So it's a huge game, and uh, we, we really want to start the season 1-0. Chris, are you trying to find some fishing spots in Ireland? <laughs> I bet you could. Uh, hopefully we got time for some of that. Yeah. Sure they, I don't know what they catch out there, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. Yeah, that'd be real fun. How about you, Nate? I mean, what are you looking forward to just this opportunity for the program? Um, I've never been out of the country, so I'm, I'm just very excited for the experience. And um, I thought that one thing I noticed is that in a different environment like that, which a completely different environment, I think it's important for us to really lock in and um, focus on the details when it comes to playing Northwestern. Yeah, Chancellor, how do, when you go out there, I mean, how do you make that type of game, you know, not a vacation? Because obviously, you know, a lot is on the line for Nebraska football in, in Dublin. Yeah, I would just say um, even before we even get there, make sure our mindset's right. Um, make sure last couple of weeks of camps we're, we're focused on Northwestern and approach the season and, and making sure we don't uh, take steps back. Well, in general, the schedule, I mean, the, the beginning part of it, there's obviously an opportunity to kind of get this thing started out right. How important is, the, all of them are important, but the yeah. beginning of the year, because last year you kind of saw what happened when you lost that Illinois game. Mm -hmm. It just, the, the, the confidence just wasn't all the way there, you know, after that loss. And it affected the rest of the year. How important is just the early part of this year? Yeah, I think it's huge. Um, getting off to a great start, you know, it's keeping it inclined. So, um, you know, guys, Really pumped for that first game. You know, uh, Northwestern's a great team. If we go out there and play our best football, then um, we'll come out on top. And then uh, from from there on, it's you want to go one and zero every week. And uh, you know, if, if we do that, then the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, you think about last year, Chris. What did you learn from that year? Just all the close losses and the and, and the, the heartbreak that you had to battle every single week after those games. Yeah, I mean, we got it. we battled every game, and I mean, I just think uh, we just need to figure out how to finish and actually start winning. Because I feel like once you get your momentum going and you start winning these games, then that helps you push over the top and win those close games. And Nate, you're a native Nebraskan, just like Chris. I mean, for you, being from Aurora, how important is it to try to be the group that gets this thing back? Yeah, it's very important. I think I think it starts in the off season, too. Um, it's not just going to the mandatory things. It's going to the extra film, extra player-led activities. And I think that'll help us boost over the edge. And Chancellor, finally, what, what do you what's got to get done? Like, what do you guys got to do to get over that hump where you you can finish the game against Michigan State? You can finish it against mm -hmm. Michigan and those types of games you guys lost a year ago. Yeah, I think it it started a while ago. I think it started really in January, um, getting the guys back around, and it's, it's details like we've been saying. But it's also just playing football. We can't we can't go around and and try to coach a a crazy mistake that happened last year. You know what I'm saying? We just got to really just play football and. Um, and approach every day like it's our last. Well, guys, appreciate getting the chance to sit down with all you. Uh, I know you guys got a really busy summer of prep. Uh, appreciate you guys again taking the time to sit down. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you. Well, thanks it. again Thank to you. the tight end group as uh, that wraps up our look at Nebraska's tight ends heading into the 2022 season. For Husker Online and ABM, I'm Sean Callahan.